Happy Friday. You made it to the end of the week and welcome to the 12 News Digital Digest on WJTV.com. I'm Marcus James. And I'm Sienna Reeves. Here's a look at the top 12 trending stories of the week. After 10 deaths in Mississippi's prison system, Governor Tate Reeves and Interim Correctional Commissioner Tommy Taylor are working to restore order. Governor Reeves is confident that the steps they're taking will make the system better. After touring Parchment on Thursday, the governor found severe maintenance issues, which Reeves says are mostly caused by inmates with nothing else to do. 12 News asks if any emergency funding has been thought of for repairs and the addition of guards. Here's how the governor responded. If and when uh, that becomes necessary, we will go to the legislature and ask for uh, additional funding. Um, many of the steps that we are currently implementing uh, are really more managerial. There was also talk about reopening Walnut Grove Correctional's facility. It shut down about four years ago. Reeves said it could be privately ran. Former Mississippi State wide receiver Deronia Wilson was killed in Birmingham on Tuesday. He was found unresponsive by a family member at a home. Police say that the 25-year-old's death was ruled, had been ruled as a homicide. There's no word on a suspect. Funeral arrangements have been set for Clinton police officer Johnny Figures. Visitation will be from 1 p.m. until 7 p.m. on Friday at Jackson Memorial Funeral Home. The funeral will be held on Saturday at 11 a.m. at Morrison Heights Baptist Church. In addition to Figures' death, his family's home was recently flooded. A GoFundMe has been set up to help the fa family. Funeral arrangements have also been set for pedal teen Jacoby Bergeron. He passed away last week after a battle with bad disease. His funeral will be at Carterville Baptist Church in Petal on Saturday. The viewing will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The service will start shortly after. The CDC says the United States is in peak flu season. And a new study shows that millennials are not getting their flu shots. Some Jackson State students said they don't need the shot because they don't get sick. 12 News asked JSU Dr. Samuel Jones Jr. how this affects visits to the college's health center. He says the facility doesn't order as much of the vaccine as they once did. The flu vaccine itself is uh, limited based on the demand. It's just not uh, that sought after. It has been fairly mild so far. I probably should knock on wood because in a week or two we might get 20 or 30 cases as it has been in the past. Doctors recommend that everyone get their flu shot. Familiar Jackson grocery stores will soon have new owners and a new home. Uh, three, two, one. Familiar Jackson grocery stores will soon have a new owner and a new name. 12 News Gerald Harris has more on the sale of the McDade's and Frugal grocery stores. A Mississippi company is taking over four Jackson grocery stores. Locations are so great and in great neighborhoods on North Side and uh, Vondren, Bellhaven, and on Ellis Avenue and Westland. Um, they're just such good neighborhood grocery stores. Roberts Company Incorporated recently purchased the four McDade's Frugal's locations, as well as the McDade's Wine and Spirits, keeping the convenient grocers open. When a customer comes in, I want them to feel like they're home, like they're they're comfortable uh, and they're appreciated. That's the main thing. I want I want the customer to feel like they're appreciated, that we appreciate their business and we thank, they thank them for being at our store and choosing our store to shop at. Robert said no employees will be losing their jobs, but the stores will soon have new names. The three north side stores will become corner markets, while the Robinson Road location will become a grocery depot. Not only do we want to keep the employees on, but I mean, we want to promote some employees or, you know, add employees. And, and, and that's kind of our culture. That's how we do things uh, in this very competitive environment. You know, employees, your people is what sets you apart. The Hattiesburg-based company owns 16 stores in South Mississippi. Customers can expect at some point for the stores to close for a day or two as they begin to do background work to complete the change of hands of the company. Reporting in Jackson, Gerald Harris, 12 News. After closing in August 2018, the Metro Center Mall in Jackson is now under new ownership. Emily Sanders purchased the mall and says that she has big plans in store, like new vendors and shops. She says that she understands the mall has been a cultural landmark in West Jackson for years. 
there are new businesses coming in every day. There are also old vendors who were here um, coming back saying, hey, let me have my space. So um, we've got a pretty good start. Now Sanders plans to open the mall by April 1st. Congressman Michael Guest announces the winner of the 2019 Congressional App Challenge. The winner is Brandon Middle School student Chad Bynum. The eighth grader created an app called Periodically. It gives a detailed look at each element on the periodic table. It took a little bit. We ran through a ton of ideas before we actually got to this one. But in the end, we made like a pro con list on my computer and decided that this would be a very useful app for students and it would be the best idea for me. We wanted to do something uh, to participate in that uh, from our district and encourage the people of Mississippi to be a part of that. Uh, we are going to see again continued exponential growth in these fields. We want to encourage these young men and these young women uh, to go ahead and look at that as a potential um, job course down the road. Uh, we want to keep those jobs in Mississippi. Three other Brandon Middle School students placed third in the challenge. Angie Thomas now has a scholarship program named in her honor. It comes from Belhaven University. The Angie Thomas Writer Scholarship Program is designed to help young writers. One incoming creative writer major will receive a full ride while others will receive additional awards. Angie Thomas graduated from Belhaven in 2011. She's known for her best-selling novels on the come up and the hate you give. In less than a week, you'll be able to buy Powerball and Mega Million tickets in Mississippi. The tickets will go on sale starting January 30th. Billboards are already up and are ready to promote the lottery games. Now to some events that are happening this weekend. The Chili for Children cook-off is tomorrow in Vicksburg. The event will be outside the Lady Luck Casino from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And those proceeds will benefit the Warren County Children's Shelter and Jacobs Ladder Learning Center. Television is gearing up for the biggest night in music. One of the Grammy nominees is right here from Mississippi. Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram is nominated for Best Tradition Blues Album for Tall, Dark, and Handsome. Two other Mississippians are nominated for the Grammys. Blues legend Bobby Rush is also nominated for Best Tradition Blues Album for Sitting on the Top of the Blues. And Bobby Gentry is nominated for Best Traditional Album for The Girl from Chickasaw County. You can watch the Grammys on 12 News Sunday night at 7. Remember, news, weather, and sports are available 24-7 at WJTV.com and on our news and weather apps. And as always, be sure to engage us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we'll be back next Friday for a look at next week's top 12 stories.